What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sir Makers and welcome back to another Tool Tuesday. I'm actually out working today. The weather has gotten substantially warmer, even though it's below freezing right now. It was about 18 this morning, now it's about 30 degrees. But what does that mean? It's sweat at weather. So <laughs> I'm out. Um, I've been working on framing in this uh, small bump out of the roof on the front of our cabin. And it's a little bit afternoon, I'm starting to drag, need a little bit of a pick me up. And so I have a friend that actually sent me a tool. So <laughs> we are looking at today, the Makita Cordless Coffee Maker. This is, for those of you who want to know, the DCM501Z. So this is a uh, small one serving coffee maker. It's battery powered. It'll run on 12 volt, 14.4 and 18 volt batteries, which is kind of cool. Pretty much any Makita battery that you've got laying around, um, you can use unless of course you're using the 40 volt system. And I think they've got some 40 volt coffee makers and hot water kettles, but I'm not positive on that yet. So for today, we're gonna run this off an 18 volt LXT battery. I've got the five amp hour. I actually label mine on the back with a um, yellow paint marker. And then I also mark my batteries with blue just so I know which ones are mine. It's fully charged. This thing will make, I think, around three servings for a five amp hour battery, 18 volt. So it's not an impressive amount, but if you consider resistance heating is actually a really big energy drain, it's not too bad. So I've got some water here. They say do not use hot water, preheated water, because it'll actually percolate and run through too fast and overflow. You get a small um, stainless steel, I believe it is, insulated mug so it's a double wall mug and you have a little cap that actually goes on when you're making the coffee i've got a little ziploc baggie of our cowboy coffee which a lot of our friends when they come to visit they say we make our coffee way too strong for them but hey it's all good this coffee maker comes with a little basket filter and then it also and with the basket filter it has a little container for that filter to go into. So you can put your regular coffee grounds into and sawdust if you want it. And then it also has a little um, pod filter. So this will take, it's designed for 60 millimeter diameter little fabric um, mesh baggies that hold coffee in it, pre-made. In the United States here, the 60 millimeter is kind of hard to get. So there's, I believe it's Senseo or Seo, something like that. Um, they make a 62 millimeter disc that actually works quite well. Haven't used them. They don't stock them in the store normally. So you can find them online if you need to. But uh, let's get this going. So I open up the top and there's a little reservoir in here and it goes up to 240 milliliters. And basically, that would be a full cup here. So I'm gonna pour some water in there up to the 240 milliliter because I want a full serving of coffee. Just pour it on in and it's actually got a little overflow. So if you overfill it, it'll drain out the excess water. There we go. You probably wanna do this on a relatively level surface, which my stack OSB here isn't super level, but get that in there. Now, since I'm using the ground coffee, I'm gonna open this little uh, basket container up. There's a little scoop on the inside of the lid here. That is one serving. So you fill that up with coffee grounds flush to the top, pour it in, and you're just about ready for business. So get that filled up. Pour that in there, return the scoop to home, close that lid, snap it down. Now close this, slide it into the front, take our cup. That is the sound of snow sliding off a shelter logic roof. <laughs> That's a good thing. So I slip the cup in there. It's got a little door on the side here that you can slide over and you can run your smaller 12 volt batteries here. 
And then if you want, you slide it over to here and you've got your 18 volt. Um, I believe you also can run, yeah, I think, I think 18 volts only on this side. So I snap that battery down in there and hit the power button and wait. They say it takes about five minutes for a full cup to go. And um, yeah, this, this is fun. <laughs> it's not often that you actually get heated coffee not out of a thermos on a job site. So let's see how it goes and uh, give it a try. While we're waiting for the coffee to brew, just a quick sequence of events up here. I've got my subfascia, which is two by six dug fur framing material. I'm gonna wrap that with a one by or seven eighths technically thick cedar, rough sawn cedar trim. It's gonna be a two by eight around the fascia. So we'll have a pre-primed, pre-painted green ring of cedar around there. On top of that, I'm gonna put a metal drip edge and it actually extends past our fascia about an inch and a half. That will then get a peel and stick membrane because of the size of this roof here. The entire thing is gonna be peel and stick. There's no, it's not big enough to put just regular conventional uh, synthetic felt on there, like the main roof. So we'll have our peel and stick. It'll actually go up the back wall a little bit. We'll put some uh, flashing at the wall to roof intersection. Then we'll put our roofing on top our uh, Z closures at the top edge and along our hips. We'll slide our hips on and more snow going off the roof. <laughs> we'll put our uh, roofing metal on there and then we'll put our caps and then uh, finally a caps on the hips. And then finally we'll do another row of flashing that goes over the tops of our roof panels. At the intersection where the roof panel meets the wall, we're actually gonna do a bread pan fold. I got some cool tools for that. Stubai brand tools out of Austria, I believe it is. And uh, we'll bread pan the tops of our sheet metal as it abuts the wall. That way, if water can get past our Z closures, our trim, our flashing, our counter flashing, all that stuff, it's got like five different layers that it's gotta get through before it can get into the house and potentially cause a leak. Over that, once all that's done, we'll put additional Tyvek over the top and lap over everything so that if water does get out, it drips out correctly. It's been right around five minutes, I would say, and it sounds like it's gurgling up the last bit of water. So I think we should have coffee here pretty quick. A little red light went off. I believe that's the indication for I'm ready. <laughs> so uh, let's give it a try. So the battery's not too hot. Sometimes they can get hot when they're run through a high drain tool. Sometimes like um, on our lawnmower, if we run the lawnmower, uh, you can disconnect the batteries and you'll feel that they're hot. Um, this isn't too bad. Uh, the batteries, I've been finding that they work pretty well in the cold, but every now and again, you have to disconnect and reconnect the battery to kind of reset the tool itself, um, especially the circular saw or the chainsaw, which are the main tools that I've been using when it's really cold. Uh, the battery life sometimes goes down as does any, but um, I haven't done a review on it yet, but I do have the Metabo HPT 36 volt multi-volt um, cordless nail gun, framing nail gun, which is the full round head 21 degree framer. And I had that sitting out here in the Shelter Logic for the past couple months through the coldest time. The battery was installed. I have not charged the battery. I pulled it out yesterday, started using it, and it worked fine. It never had an issue with the battery. It's still got a charge. So I'm pretty impressed with it running after being in storage, basically in sub-zero weather, literally, for several months. And then now it's, uh, it's running just fine. So let's try some of this coffee here. Pull it on out of the maker. Let's pour our lid off. It looks dark like coffee should. And like real coffee, you don't put anything in your coffee. Forget the creamer, forget the sugar, forget all that junk, you just drink it straight. Or maybe that's just me because I'm too lazy to put all the stuff in it. Not too bad. Yeah. It's definitely hot um, because it is a metal container. You do run the risk of potentially burning your lip if it sat in there for too long. Um, it's a little less strong than I'm used to, but then again, we make cowboy coffee and we make it strong. <laughs> so 
overall, yeah, this is awesome. I believe you can get extra cups. Um, I found them on tool repair websites and I think they're around $16, $18 a piece. So a little bit spendy, but if you've got multiple people on a job site, we might not all want to share one cup. <laughs> so, yeah. The Makita DCM 501Z cordless battery powered coffee maker. It's made my day better already. So <laughs> until next time, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, like, uh, thumbs up. All those things really help us a lot. If you look down below in the description, I have an Amazon affiliate and I'll provide links to this tool and other tools that I endorse personally, I use. Um, and that does help us out a little bit, not a whole lot, but any anything helps, so we appreciate it. Also, if you go through that link to Amazon and buy other stuff that you need already, not necessarily tools, you just follow our link, we get a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it does help us out. So until next time, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Have an awesome day. Bye.